Hey guys and welcome aboard my uh, video breakdown of the Thunderstorm catapult launch video. My call sign is Bale. I'm a naval aviator in the United States Navy. I've been a growler pilot for over 10 years and now I'm a T-45 flight instructor in Kingsville, Texas. And we're off to the races. The plane captain has released us and now we're turning uh, left. We we're parked in the finger which is in the back port side of the ship. All the way to the back where the LSOs sit. Um, and now we're taxiing towards catapult. Three. Catapult 3 is the uh, one of the waste cats, the one to the right. Uh, catapults 1 and 2 are on the right side, 3 is kind of right here, and then 4 is a catapult to our left. The director has stopped us now. He's going to get us lined up. Before we can do that, though, we need to verify our aircraft weight. You should see uh, a guy in our green shirt on the left side over here hold up what's called a weight board. I'm going to go to the uh, checklist page, verify my aircraft weight, and see if it looks good. He's holding it up. He usually goes to the back seater, or the EWO in this case, where we'll verify the aircraft weight. You'll see it looks like the EWO is helping to make a change to that. When it's good, I'll give him a big head nod. Yep, that looks good. And then now he's verified the aircraft weight with what I think the aircraft weight is. And that goes into the computer for the launch to make sure we get the right end speed or flyaway speed at the end of the catapult. So we've got that squared away, and now we're just hanging out waiting uh, until we can get lined up on the catapult. You can see now if, uh, off the bow, kind of on the, uh, the right side a little bit, there's some clouds. It doesn't look too bad, but you can see that the ship uh, is pointing into the wind. And unfortunately, or fortunately, depending upon how you want to look at it for this video, um, the wind is usually where the storms are. So in this case, storms are associated with updrafts and downdrafts. When there's downdrafts and the downdrafts hit the water, they deflect in some way. Uh, and the ship is going to point into those downdrafts. In this case, it's like kind of like isolated thunderstorm kind of thing. So the ship's going to point into that because that's where the relative wind is. You can't have a uh, crosswind or a tailwind for catapult launches. You got to point directly into the wind. And if it's not windy enough to make that end speed required, then the ship's going to have to go faster uh, than normal in order to make sure that they can pick up that those extra couple of knots for us. So as we're sitting here, you can see the guys on catapult uh, four. The second waste cat to the left over there, you can see this on the nose it says uh, 501. The 500 series is going to be our growlers. So my aircraft is also a 500 series, so you can see that that's another growler that's up there on the left uh, cat on the left catapult, which is catapult 4, as we're getting ready to get up on catapult 3. Because of the wingspan considerations, you can't generally have aircraft on catapults 4 and 3 at the same time because the waste cats, they actually converge at the waist a little bit, unlike catapults 1 and 2. So, um, they're generally just going to have one aircraft set up on the catapult at a time. So now we wait and you see that uh, the dark clouds off the nose are getting just a little bit closer, but it's a nice calm day. The seas are very calm. Just some slow, low swells, but nothing too big. Nothing uh, worth worrying about at all. If you look off the right side of the cockpit, you see at a right one o'clock, kind of interesting, there's a cod down there, um, a cod, the, uh, the, e, the, correction, the C2 Greyhound. They normally come on board to give people, drop off people, supplies, things like that, but they very, very rarely shut down. So in this particular case, obviously there's something wrong with the aircraft, they need to shut it down for some kind of maintenance on deck, and you, <laughs> you always never see them shut down on deck. They normally just get chained and they'll continue to run, continue to run for a cycle maybe, uh, while they get gas, they put all their... Uh, cargo and people back in and they, they get the heck out of there. Daytime only operations for those guys, certainly for uh, catapult shots and for, uh, for landings. The thing that's kind of interesting that a lot of people ask about in these videos is just like, hey, why does it take so long for a cat shot? Well, the thing you don't understand, well, a lot of people don't understand, is that catapult shots start at a certain time. So there's a flight schedule, and the flight schedule will talk about what time the actual launches and recoveries start. So at exactly whatever time it was, in this case, let's just say it's like 10.30, all the jets are going to get staged and ready to go for a 10.30 launch exactly uh, off the bow. For the first aircraft to go at 10.30, the next one's going to go a few seconds later, and a few seconds later, and a few seconds later. So in this particular case, you know, everybody starts off the jets about 45, 30 to 45 minutes early, depending upon what you're doing, to make sure that you have plenty of time to troubleshoot if there's any problems with your aircraft 
Um, and then uh, now we, we're just waiting. So we're lining up for Catapult 3. There's going to be guys and gals behind us uh, waiting behind the JVD or the Jet Blast Deflector, that big concrete barrier wall that'll show up that pops up right behind the aircraft. There'll be people waiting back there uh, for us um, for it to go behind us. So now we're just waiting, and they're not going to put us in the actual catapult until it's time for us to go. Um, and you can see that there's a Hawkeye. He two over there at our like right one o'clock or so to start the taxi. Uh, and let's see where they go here in a sec. Looks like they're making a right hand turn for either Cat 1 or 2, which we talked about is going to be one of the bow cats uh, right off the nose. Whenever those guys taxi, they have to have their wings folded because their wings are just huge and they have to have wing walkers on the sides and the wings and kind of babysitters, as I call them, walk around and follow the, follow the aircraft as it taxis up to the, uh, to the catapult. Those things are terrifying because they've got gigantic propellers that turn. You can't see them when they're turning. And uh, obviously, if you get in the way of that, it's going to be super super bad day for you okay our director has told us to pull forward and we're starting to do that now as you can see there's a little bit of rain on the canopy no big deal uh, it's getting kind of windy and that wind's not coming from the E2 you see the E2 now is folding its wings uh, off of our nose and there it goes boom its wings are coming down uh, as it starts to turn from catapult one our director is moving his hands like that <clears throat> forward and back forward and back which is telling us to taxi forward and the speed at which he moves his hands is the speed at which he expects us to taxi. So in this case, when he's going kind of slow like that, he's just asking us to creep forward just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit at a time. But if you're real far away and he wants you to come faster, or if he needs you to hurry up to get out of the way for something, he'll move his hands really fast. He puts up that closed fist. In this case, he's just telling us to stop. Now he's gonna tell us to pull forward just a little tiny bit more. He's gonna tell us to put our launch bar down. And generally what he'll do is he'll point to his nose and then it'll point either left or right, telling us if we need to move the launch bar to the left a little bit or to the right a little bit, just to make sure that the launch bar goes into the shuttle, which is the thing that holds on to the launch bar to throw our catapult, to throw the jet off the catapult. Now you can see the wind and the rain is really starting to pick up quite a bit. It's a bad day for the guys working on the deck because it's getting pretty close to launch time and now they gotta continue to get everything set up, get ready to go in spite of the weather. In this case, my director's moved to the right-hand side over there. He's just telling me to wait. As the guys, you can see uh, at my uh, left, 10 o'clock, the, the yellow um, catapult officer is ducked down with another uh, arrest, not arrested, a catapult uh, a worker over there. And you see they're both entering all the data. They've got uh, some pamphlets where they look at all the data for the aircraft weight and the required end speed. Uh, and they're just making sure that the catapult is set up just properly so that we get that proper end speed off the bow. So in this case, uh, our director is kind of on my right side around my one or two o'clock right behind my head. You can see him there, he's just telling us to hang on and wait. As the guys get the catapult set up, cool, good to go. Looks like they're just about ready to go. Looks like the storm has passed a little bit now. You can see all the steam coming off the catapult. It's hot, cat's super hot. It's got rain on it now. It's just steam and mist all over the place. Now the director is telling us to move forward a little bit. It's the directors that are right at 1 o'clock or so. You can see them right behind the cougar on my helmet. So we're moving forward, we're moving forward, moving forward. His hands are moving kind of slowly a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And we're going to stop here in a sec. Cool. He's going to tell us to go into tension in a second, which is when we take our feet off the brakes, make sure our parking brakes put in. And that's kind of like cocking the gun on the catapult, making sure we're getting ready to go here. So we'll do that in a sec. Boom, there it is. Feet off the brake, parking brake in. Cool, now we're in tension, so the catapult's all wound up, getting ready to go. And then now we just wait here for him to tell us to go get, go ahead and give us the run-up. Now a lot of people ask about what's the big deal with the run-up with the wipe, because I put the throttle all the way up to mill, and eventually advance it to max, and I wipe out the stick really, really quickly. People are always asking, why do you do that? And so the reason why we do that is because you, we have an electronic flight control system in the growler, so what we're looking for is we want to move the control surfaces in full deflections in every single way, before we go off the cat shot, just to make sure that there is a problem with the catapult, with a correction with the airplane, if there's a problem with the airplane, that we wanna know about it before we go off the cat. Cool. So here we are, oh, there it is actually, there's a signal for attention and with the arm goes full out like that, boom, feet out the brake, parking brake in, cool, now we're ready to go. There's the wipeout, cool. 
the big pump with the fist like that means go to max power so mill to max afterburner cool everything looks good quick salute with the right hand head goes all the way back on the head box so that i don't get a little bit of helmet shock as they get thrown back and now we're waiting 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 and any second now there it is cool about three seconds about 160 knots 170 knots off the bow and there we are this is a case one launch so we're going to level off at 500 feet. We're going to start to turn left. We're going to come back right back to the right. We stay at 500 feet to 7 miles, and then we're clear to maneuver. Thanks for watching, guys. I've enjoyed having you aboard. And uh, as always, if you like the video, like, comment, and subscribe. Welcome to Growler Jams.